Ah, yes, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, where were you last week? Most of you have spent the last week. Where were you? Where were you last week? Hmm? Juma. Yes. Where were you last week? You had this. I had technicalities with my device. That is what about me, Bella? Uh, I, I have one. <laughs> Siku na juu kutumia hii pla hii e- lining. Yeah, but it's okay now. But it's what? But, but you are sure you have gone through the loop of uh, of being fishing together. What have been fishing? So this yeah. morning I've said that we can uh, we can preview what we covered last week because most of you have studied together. Yeah. Yeah. Then I will show you. I will just straight now on the procedure. I will just straight on the procedure of uh, adding a signature to the email together because I was able to do that. Do that. It is more practical together. Remember this unit. It is out of four practical together. So I will be sharing a screen here of how you can add a signature to the email together. For example, I think you have first seen it's an email. At the bottom, you can have, for example, your names. You can have your names. You can have the contact. Is it true? Yeah. So I will illustrate now the procedure of adding that because I was able to do that last week. So now what do you have to do now? You have to open your Gmail account. I will be sharing a screen. Let me just share a screen. Let me share a screen of the Gmail. Let me just share screen. I'm sharing a screen. Yeah, I want to share a screen. Yeah, of how you can add the signature to the email. Yeah, because in the exam scenario, you can be requested now. In the exam scenario, you can be requested to explain the procedure of adding a signature to the email together. So the first thing yeah. you have to do now, you have to go to the Gmail account together. Let me, let yes. me, let me just, uh, I'm just, just let me just share the screen. I want to share the screen. Let me just share the screen. Are you able to see that screen? Yes. I can see it. Can you see the screen of the Gmail? I can see. You can it. see it. Yeah. Yeah. So I have to sign in first now. For you to add the signature now, you can you can see it. Yeah, can I can see. see it. The yeah. No. So the first now sign in to the Gmail account. So let me just log in. Just log in. So you have to sign in first to the Gmail account. So log in to my Gmail account. I can't hear you properly.
Yeah, let me use more. Let me just share the screen. Are you able to see that Gmail account? Can you, can you see it? Are you able to see it? Can you see it? Juma, can you see that? Uh, can you see? Now you have to go now. Once you open that account, you have to go to the settings. You have to go to the settings. Just go to the settings. I will be able to hear me. Juma, are you able to see? I can see it. Ah, that is okay. So now I want to add a signature. I want to add a signature to the to this account now. You have to go to the settings together. So for example, you're at this point now. You're at that point. You have to go to the settings together. You can see this icon here. You have to click it. You just click it, then you go to the settings right together. You go to the settings. Then you have to scroll right together. You have to scroll at the bottom. That is here. Now we're able to add a a picture here you can add a picture is here then still you can add what i say a signature for example let me just delete this one let me delete that i want to add a new one yeah now we have it here and this part here we have this part for the signature here you just click what click new right together then the signature name you can use your maybe your surname or you can use your, your first name or your middle your middle your middle name in my case now i'll be using my, my first name Add it is here I click what I click create now it is here. Then at this point now I can add even my details here. For example, I can have maybe I can have this another signature here. Okay. Have that. Then you can add your your code. The text that is here you can just format the information. I want this information here to be put permission. Then you click on ita italics. Then in the case now. In case now you want to, for example, in case you want to add an image to your signature, in case that here, and you say we have this part here, insert image. Just click on the insert image, then you have to select the image. You have to, what? You have to select what the, e, the image. So, for example, maybe you want to select an image from the from a local drive in the computer, or still, in case you want to select an image, for example, in case you're using a Google Drive, I hope you can see. Can you see? No, I'm saying now, in case now you're at this, we were at this point now, in case now we have added this information here, we have added that information, and now you want to add an image. I think that you want to add an image to your, to your signature. We have this part here, I think that we have this part here, you just insert an image. You can select this image. You can either upload from uh, from the computer itself from a local folder, or for example, in case you're having uh, some images online, because for example in a Google Drive, you can just do what you can just use the drive. But in case now I want to just upload an image from the uh, local folder in the computer, I just click what upload, upload. Now we have this part here, select the file from your device, your device. You just select the directory from where that image is. You just select a file, upload that now, then I can select. For example, maybe I have my images here. Let me just select an image, I upload one. Let me just select. Let me just select one here, an image. Let me let me just select one. Just to you, just to select one an image. Let me just select one. Yeah, I'm uploading that one image to my signature. It is here. I'm uploading one. Yeah, once you are through now, yeah, it is here. 
can you see it? Can you see the, the, the image, the signature, like yes. it's here? Then now you can, you can for example, can you, in, case, yeah, in case you want to decide now, you have this part here. In case you want a small one, you have medium, you have large, and you have what original space. But you prefer now either okay. small or original space. Once you are through now, you can do what? You can still fix the changes. But together, just click what? You just okay. click save. Just click save. Now we have saved. We have what? We have saved. But together, let us now try to compile an email. We see whether that information appears on that part of the signature. In case we just click compose now, we are able to see it's not here. There's somewhere we have not. Uh, let me just get back to the settings. Yeah, there's something we have missed. Let me just get back. It's supposed to be at the bottom. Let me just get back. Yeah. Like I have saved the information. Yeah, the information is here. Um, we, we have to organize it. Yeah, you have saved the changes. Let us reload the page. Let us reload the page. Yeah, let, let me see. There is there is a problem with my network. It's not, it's not saving the information. Let me see why the information is not being saved. Is not saving the information. Yeah, it is here. Can you see this part here? Can you see this part here for the new image right together? Yeah, we have to do we have to use that right together. We have to add that information right together. Can you see that information here? Right together. Then we have this part here. Insert the signature before it is here together. Yes. Yeah, it is here. Yeah. You have to click that watch checkbox. Then you click what you click save. Yeah. Understand the information is here. Are you able to see it? Understand the information. Are you able to see that information? Juma, are you able to... what about Nyabela? I can see. Yeah, Nyabela, what about Nyabela? Is he able to see that information? Yeah, but you have that information together. So that is the procedure of adding yeah. a signature together in, a, in, the, in, the, in an email. But I have said in the exam scenario, you can be requested. You can be requested to describe or the procedure of adding what I say a signature together. So you have said the first step now, you have to go to the settings right together. Once you go to your Gmail account, you go to the settings, then you scroll right together, then you do what? Then you scroll up that and you have for the say the signature. That is one point in what? In signatures. Still in the emails, for example, I think you have ever seen, for example, in case someone is on leave, there's a message they there in the email right together. For example, maybe someone is on leave for 10 days. In case someone is able to send an email to that account at that time, sometimes there is a, a default message that is deprived by, by that email account. We have this part here in the email. Let me just show you. And this part here, vacationless folder. What is that? And this is this part here. No. Are you oh, let me let me see, let me see, let me see, let me reload once more. I'll show you. Let me just reload it. So I show that part. I want to load, I show that part, just a minute.
let me just reset the screen once more i'll show that part I brought his crazy. Yes, I can see it. No, I was saying now. For I example, can see it. Yeah, in case someone is on leave, I go, he's upset, I get from work. You know, in case now someone is able to send an email to that uh, account, there is what we call, we have uh, a vacation list for that. I get a vacation list for this one. For this one, there's an automated email or auto, an automated response to all the incoming messages. I get so, the data, yeah. the, start, the starting date now, you put it here. And this is this part here. Vacation is is on. For example, if your first day is 27th, up the last day is this this, this date. If it's maybe subject, you can have a, let us have a subject. We can have a um, vacation is for them. Or maybe we can say absent. We can have that information. Then we have the message. That is for the mail, the message. So what would happen now? In case someone we is able to send an email to that account, the, the message which will appear here will be Spread back to that to that e email, but every time you have, you have to ensure that you have to do what you have to save the shape, the changes understood. You have understood, Juma. I hope not is that I hope you have understood, but you have to save for the shape, the changes. But now you have to put it off, you have to put it off, you have to put it off. So that is the procedure of adding a signature and adding a vacation responder that automated message to that email account account any question on that any question any question so you have any question you have any question do you have any question on that any question You have any question on that? You have any question? Uh, no. Yeah, now the next part now, for, for example, you can see this is an email question. account. This is, one, this is an email account. For example, in case now you are requested to explain the difference between you have any box and you have what? Sent. What is the difference between any box and sent? Now, any box now, these are the emails which have been received together or the incoming what? Email me messages that together from different recipients. That is the inbox. What about the sent? We have this part here. We have the sent. We have this part here. We have the sent. Which are these sent emails? These are the emails that have been sent by the recipient to other people. And that together from the what? From this account. Account. That is what they say. The sent. What if now? Maybe you can explain now the difference between. Can you see we have draft here? Can you see draft? We have draft and we have uh, I'm not yeah, the term, book. What is the difference? Yeah, I'm, I'm asking what is the difference between in the email we have draft? Is it true? Yeah. Is it true? And we have uh, the other book. Yeah. Now what is the difference between these two? The difference between these two. What is the difference between drafts these two? are messages that are Drafts are emails that have been written but have not been sent. Yeah, they have been written but have not been sent. What about the outbox? Uh, yeah, what about what about outbox? Yeah, what, what about outbox now? Hmm? Now what happens now in the outbox now? We have seen now the draft. These are the emails that you have written, but you have not sent. Yeah. But what happens in the draft now? In the draft, you have not inputted, you have not inputted, you have not put in the recipient address. Yeah. So you get the email address. That is all in the draft. Together. But now in the outbox now, you have written the email message, you have inputted the email address of the recipient. But now, maybe since your smartphone, your computer was having low internet, that message has not been sent. In the case you're using your phone, in the case you're using your smartphone, and you have this table, whole, the background, yes? Oh, I'm saying it's a holding area. 
Yeah, I'm saying this. For example, you, in the draft now, you have written the email. Is that true? In the message, the subjects, but you have not inputted the email address of the recipient. That is a draft. That is a what? A draft? A draft. You have not inputted the email address of the recipient. But now, in terms of the outbox now, you have written the email, everything, and you have sent. But that email have not been received by the recipient. Why? In case you are having one internet, this in the outbox. In case you are, you are sending that email, in case you are sending that email using your smartphone, and you have disabled the background data, that email stays in the outbox. You have to enable the background data so that now that email can be sent. Or in case now you have or the, the internet gets back, that email will be there and be sent. So that's the difference. So you understand the difference now. Yeah. Yeah, then we then you see the email. I think you have ever seen we have a we have the reply and forward. Have you ever seen that? It's a component the email. We have the and forward. What is the difference now between the reply and yeah. forward? Yeah. What is the difference? Yeah. We're already having a discussion. What is the difference between the reply is in, in the context of email? Yes. Reply and forward. Reply is, reply is answering to an email that has been sent to you. It's answering to an email that has been sent to you. What about forward? What about uh, forward? Sending. Sending an email that has been sent to you to another recipient. Yes, that is what you call the form. The form that together. Oh. Yeah, that is good. Yes. And we said for the email, which are the components of the email. We said an email. We must have the components. You have the email head. Right? Together. You have the email head. Yes. Head. Right? Together. We have the, the subjects. Right? Together. You have the sub. The subjects. We have the signature. Right? Together. So you have to be remembering yes. these this words. Compo components. And remember very very well. We said for the email header, it has what recipient address, even the subject. Even what the sub the subject. So you have to be very, very careful. Yeah, that was the, oh, that, that was the email. Yeah. Now, what if now you are, you are asked to explain now the benefits of an email? What, what, what are these benefits of having an email? What are the advantages of an email? And he said, one of the advantages of an email is what? Very, very convenient. Very, very conv convenient. You convenient. can send an email or you can uh, confirm the message in the email in the, in the time. Right? For example, even if you are traveling, you can just check what the email the email anytime. The other, very, very convenient. Still, another advantage is what? Less exp expensive. Very less expensive. Very, very cheap. The cost of the internet is very, very low. Is it true? Is it true? You know? Yes, yeah, it's very expensive. Still, another advantage of the email is that uh, you can access that email anytime. Or still, you can. You can forward the same same message to various people around the world. For example, in case you have compiled, for example, you can do this now in the email here. For example, let us compile an email here. For example, maybe I maybe I send this email to someone, maybe subject, maybe email, email class. And I have several students I'm sending that message to. I have several students, maybe you yeah, can have a message here, you can have this. You can have this information, maybe good morning. Maybe we are we are having we are having a class. Because you have that information now, and I'm sending this information to several recipients. You have this part here. And this is one carbon copy. And this is part here, the CC. This one not together. I'm and using this screen uh, share. Oh, let me just oh, are you able to see it? The screen, can you see no. the screen? Maybe, and I am, I am able to see it is here. Maybe just check your network, it is here. I'm able to see it. Just confirm we can see it. Lord. Yeah. Are you able to see it?
I was saying this. In the case now, we have this information. Maybe for example, we yeah. compile a message here. Good morning. We are having a we are having a class. Maybe at um, 10 a.m. We have that information. We have all that information. That information. You realize it's not about the same feature. But now I'm setting maybe to allow the 10 recipients. 10 recipients. We have this part here. For example, maybe the first recipient. We just need to put some information here. We have that information. If, for example, maybe I want to send an email, email to other students, we have this part here. And this is this one, the CC, the carbon copy. That part here, the carbon copy. And you see it, that carbon copy. And the purpose of this one now, in case that yeah. I send the same email to other recipients, they're able to see that that email or that message was shared with other people. It was shared with what? With other people. Understood? That is the purpose of the what? The carbon copy. But still, we have this one. Can you see this one here? The BCC. Can you see this one here? Yeah, can you see the BCC? This one here. Can you see this one? The BCC. Let me just show you this one. Can you see this one? The BCC. Now, in the BCC now, in the case I'm sharing the same same message to the recipient, no one else, or they won't know that the, that the same same message is being shared with other people together. That is the purpose of the BCC. The black carbon copy. So you have to know the difference between what the BCC and what the carbon copy. Any question? Have that for any question? When you have any question, you have any question? Copy. Yeah, so we can consider together. And see it. Yeah, that is that is, that is good now. At the now, top. Yes? Yeah. I can't hear you. Can't hear you. Yes, Juma. I was hoping you that will be revealed. Now that's part now for today. <coughs> I want to know we discuss what you call the internet resource. This was the together we discuss what? The internet resource is also together. And now for these resources now, I want to discuss them in detail. You know what? In the in detail. And one of the resources we have, remember this last part for this uh, topic together. We have uh, the chat group together. So in the chat groups now, you must be knowing the advantages and what the disadvantages are together. For example, the chat group. Now we have, for example, in case now I want to send a message to the students, we can have uh, a WhatsApp group. Is it true? Is it true? You can have one. That is an example of a, whole, of, a, of a chat group. Now, what are the advantages now of these chat groups? One of the advantages is what we call distance training. We have distance training. Remember, normally, gathering employees together for training is often a difficult process for business. So, for businesses bringing professional experts, training can also be what is very expensive. But together, because you're saying, that for example, in case an organization or in a business wants to organize uh, some training, they might be very, very expensive. In case now, that organization or that business enterprise is higher experts. So, chat groups provide a lower cost and easier way to schedule the training. Yeah, that is what you call distance training. Then we can have what we call the customer support. We have what we call the customer support. Actually, nowadays, oh. the customer support. Actually, nowadays, live chat rooms are becoming more common on business websites. It's a way to provide instant answers to customer questions. Because most of the customers now they prefer using the chat groups to avoid dealing with what anonymous what for long days. For example, in case you are inquiring something from a safari com. You, you just need, you can just make a call, but you realize it may take a long time for the call to be responded. So most of the customers now they prefer the chat groups. They just put the question in the chat group, and there's a customer care who is the what provide what instant what response. But together, that is what another advantage of what of the chat group, the customer support. And now for this one, it is able to improve the customer relations and help businesses cater well for their customer needs. That is what you call customer support. Then still, another benefit is what you call increased productivity. Increased what productive productivity. Remember, normally, for example, in the case there is a meeting, employees have to leave their office to go to the meeting venue. But in the case now, 
you're using the chat groups, you don't have to leave your desk. Say together for meetings, say together. You can just chat or you can just respond to the messages in the what in the chat group. And once the chat is over, the employee is already at his desk and can proceed with what with what with working. That is what we call increasing productivity productivity. Then another advantage is what we call employee support. Employee support. For example, maybe a certain employee is using a certain, a certain resource organization and he has a problem. Instead of visiting the technical department, you can just make a call or you can just pose the question in that group. And the people responsible, they will provide what instant feedback. And for employees who travel a lot, the chat rooms can be used to provide direction about the clients, finding locations, and how to handle technical problems while away. That is another advantage for those employees who travel around a lot. That is what another advantage. Then still, there is what we call client conferencing. Another advantage. Client conferencing. Business nowadays are able to host their own chat rooms, or they can even use a third party for client conference conferencing. Why? These chat rooms they allow the users from any location to join in, making an ideal solution for conferences between what multiple pay, multiple people. There is what we call real-time inter interaction between the company or the business with the world, with their clients. That is what we call client conference conferencing. It is becoming more comfortable and more efficient. Now, what are the disadvantages now of having uh, this chat room? It has a lot of limitations. In all, one of the limitations is what it called unfiltered content. Unfiltered content. Anyone can post any information on that chat group. We do not have someone who is regulating the information or who is filtering the information being sent in that what in that chat, chat group. And this is a very, very is a disadvantage to the people whose malicious users can even expose others to bad language and even adult images can be sent in what in that chat group. So that is what we call unfiltered content. Unfiltered content. And that is the advantage is that uh, there is what we call computer attack. A computer attack, attack. Someone can set a malware in our chat group. And for example, maybe there's a software he has shared over that, or it is a program he has shared over that chat group. It requires you to install it. And maybe there's a malware. Once you install it now, is it your, your computer or your smartphone can be hacked? Or it even can delete all the information in your smartphone. These are called computer attack attacks. Others to attack, attack. Any question at that point? Any question or any clarification? Any question or any clarification? In the case of in case there is another question, then you can have another disadvantage. Now, for you to for you for, for someone to receive this message, now you are posting the chat group, he has to be online. That is a limitation. In case someone is offering, there is no way they can receive that information that information. Because now these chat groups, most of them, they require internet connection. They require what internet connect connection. See, another disadvantage, you may lose nonverbal communication. For example, you cannot use the word language, you cannot use even the voice in some but together. You may lose what and never communicate communication. Why most of these chat groups they entail the setting of the messages, they entail setting of what of me of messages. And the last limitation of this chat group, 
they are not secure. If they are not secure, secure and you have said you know, earlier, they are prone to what? Malicious attack, attacks, or what? Computer attack, attacks. They are not very secure, secure. So that is one of the resources which is going to be provided by what? By this internet. Then there is not a core of video conferencing. We have the second video conference, conferencing. We have the second video conference, conferencing. And now, like what we are doing now, we're having what? A video conference, conferencing. We can even, you can, uh, can schedule your class, you can schedule your class online, you can even host a meeting online, Zoom, we call video conference, conferencing. Now, what have we, if you can discuss first the types of video conferencing we have, the first one is what we call the telepresence video conferencing system. We have the teleconferencing video conferencing system. And now for this one, it is even designed to host a meeting as close as possible, as if you are there. The telepresence. From the one word presence. Even if the participants are not in the same room physically, the setup is done in a very easy way. You can use large screens, but they are used. You can use large screens and cameras. Which are positions, which are positioned at a high level. And we have said the result or the outcome of this video conferencing is that it appears as if now all the participants were sitting in the same room and around the whole the same table, the same table. That is the benefit of having what at the process video conferencing system. You appear as if with that what in that loop room, but we physically should. what in that room, but physically you are not in what in that loop room. Then there is what is called integrated. We have what we call the integrated video conferencing system. Duma, you are with. Duma. So there is what we call the integrated video conferencing system. We have the integrated video conferencing system. And enough for these ones, they are designed generally for, for group video conferencing. Enough for these ones, we must have what we call centralized what organization we must have centralized organization organization so all the peripherals for example you can have uh, the cameras the display components and other peripherals they have to be mounted they have to be mounted in what in a central okay location or they have to be present out in a central okay location in of these ones they actually ideal in case you're having a classroom conferences and you're having the boardroom conferences this is the most ideal with the conferencing system that can use the integrated way. All the information they have to be centralized in what? In a certain region. That is what we call the integrated video conferencing system. Then there is what we call the service-based video conferencing system. We have the service-based video conferencing system. The service-based video conferencing system. Now for this of now, the service provider provides everything. So for the respondent or for the who are having this service, they do not have to worry. Because you have said the provider who is most common, maybe the most often is the telecommunication carrier. He is, in, he is able to have the majority of the control when it comes to what? The network setup and communication. So this means that uh, for those people who are waiting for the meeting, there is less work on their head. You just pay for the solution and your provider manages it for you. You know, this makes it more, more convenient than others. That is what we call the service based video conferencing system. Any question at that point, Juma? Any question? Any clarification? You are discussing the types of what? Video conferencing system. Any question, Juma? Any question? Juma, any question at that point? Now, now we discuss now the advantages now of the video conferencing system. What are these benefits now of the video conferencing system? And one of the benefits is that uh, there is quicker decisions and the same rate of intervention, quicker decisions. For example, in case you are communicating, in case you are discussing, in case someone is able to raise a question, the respondent or someone who is responsible can even respond to me immediately. Look and make decisions very, very easy in an, easy, in an easier way. And so we have said the same intervention. In case someone raises a question, someone else can respond in me immediately. That is one of the benefits of having what a video conferencing what say system. Another benefit is what we call document sharing. We have what document sharing. Remember, people are located at different locations. The moderator can just can just share the document over the screen, and all the people are able to do what to see the doc the document. 
that is what we call document sharing it enhances collaborative work and teamwork within who the organization and the benefit is less expensive so the organization is able to save why people can be located at different locations so for example in this organization is hiring an expert or a professional or a motivation speaker to speak to the people of the employees the motivation speaker does not have to incur the cost of going to the organization so you can just create for example a session in the zoom or the big blue button and he is able to share the information the information so, so the organization is able to save on what on ca on capital yeah, so these are some of the advantages of having a video conferencing or same system but still this system has some limitation you know one of the limitations is technical issues uh, technical e issues for example configuration yeah configuration configuration for example because the, the employees are supposed to use a webcam and some of them are not used to maybe using the webcam so someone else have to be involved to help them to help the employees in what installing what the webcam or configure for the webcam so these are some of the technical issues or setting up the network these are some of the technical issues still it requires internet it requires what internet in case you don't have internet there is no way you can have what have the conference and what me meeting and still another disadvantage there is less personal contact you cannot interact very easily with what with other empro employees any question, Juma? Any question, Juma? At that point, any question or any clarification?
And the have discussed, you can go through the telenet very briefly. Yeah, you can go through the telenet very briefly. Now you see, now the telenet now, as for this one, there's a protocol that allows the user on one computer to log into another computer that is part of the same net network. For example, you can use the Atom Viewer. Atom Viewer requires the use of what internet. For example, in case someone is uh, in UK, and in this country, and you want to control his computer remotely, you can use what they call the team view in viewer. And this application is around uh, 15, 20 MB, and it is a whole open source. It's very, it don't have any kind of cost. You can just download it, a team view, a team viewer. After the team viewer, they're supposed to activate it. There is what you call the file transfer control, in case you want to send a document, and there is what you call the remote control control. You have these two. Now, what are the advantages now of a team viewer? One of the benefits of a team viewer is that uh, you are able to send and receive what the information, the information. You can send and receive the information. Information. Let me just maybe can just share something. The screen of the viewer just show you two options. Just share one. Just share. I'll show you the two options. Team viewer. Yeah, I hope you're able to see this. I think that we are saying now this then I think that for example is what you call you can see you have the you have the remote control. Is that true? Can you say that? We have remote control here for the file transfer. So I think that it is able to provide these two services. That is one you're able to say it and see what bear messages. The another advantage is support what user authentication. It supports user authentication authentication. And now can you see now we are having uh, something here? Can you see having an ID here and a password? Can you see this one? That is the password. So there is no way yes. you can on on that computer unless you have what unless you have a pa password unless you have a pa password. You must, you must have that. So another advantage is what you call it helps in administration of what network air elements. It helps in what administration of what of network air elements. You can control remotely, for example, in case you want to change the IP address for a certain computer remotely, you can do that. In case you want to restart a certain device, you can do that remote remotely. And now, what are, the, what are the disadvantages now of this team viewer? One of the disadvantages of this team viewer is that uh, the user ID and the password are not encrypted. That is one of the limitations. The user ID and the password are not what any create encrypted. Can you see this information here? Is in the print text. I hope you can read it. Is that true? In case someone yeah. else is able to print this information, you can just control your computer remotely. So, this information has to be encrypted. And you know what is encryption? We said encryption is the use of what? A mathematical algorithm. You can use what you call the MD5, the message, the JST5. You can use JA1, the secure hash algorithm, or that what? Print X2, the cipher. Have you, have you ever seen a, a, did, they, did they demonstrate one? Juma. Yes. Have, you, have, have you ever seen something encrypted? Have you ever seen something encrypted? Have you ever seen? Not really. Yeah, let me just just can I show you what I'm saying? Because you have said that the user ID and the password, they are, all, they are not encry encrypted. Let me just share something I show you. Okay. Let me just show you an example of encryption. Let me just show you. Juma, I hope you're able to see that information. Can you see that information? I can now, see it. Now, can you see this information? For example, you have this part here. Uh, can you see this part here? This information is the in text. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, then, yeah, exactly. Then this yeah. part here is encrypted. So the, the first part is what we call plain text. It has been encrypted using what a mathematical algorithm. You have still can have what you call the MD5. You can use the DAW1. Then this is, this is what we call the cipher. This is what we call the, the cipher together. So, 
for the team viewer now you realize yeah. the user id the password they are not they are not they are not code any credit related and that is what a limit a reputation or a disadvantage and that is a advantage now of this internet it is expensive due to what through typing speed together for example in case you are connecting to a remote computer it can be slow and the reason it is slow it is because of what the internet or what network bar but we that together understood yeah the lower the bandwidth the more expensive it becomes become. so together for example maybe you're supposed to connect to that computer for one hour it's low bandwidth so you have to connect hours because of the whole of bandwidth in case of low bandwidth the expense hikes together then that is advantage is that uh, it is not possible to learn the graphical user interface or the gui based tools of a technical connection right together why for this one it is, it is what we call a character based on communication tool so it is not possible to transmit the customer yes, movement in front, GUI information i think that, that is what a limit a limitation you cannot learn the graphical user interface tools over out over internet and there has this advantage right. that uh, it is a very inefficient protocol is what very inefficient internet very very inefficient and together it is not reliable not what reliable reliable that was the bad resource the test the internet and the other is what today is what we call the FCP. Yeah. yeah we are saying that the internet is not reliable why it is very inefficient pro protocol together sometimes you can send some you can send the information yes and that information has not been received by the client and together it's not what lila as reliable yes. yeah and the last part for today, for the last resource, is what we call the FTP, the file transfer protocol. We have FTP. the FTP, the file transfer protocol. Now, I don't you know, I know, maybe if I explain this, what is FTP according to you? What is FTP? What is FTP according to you? I mean, transferring of files from one computer to another in another, in in a client-based system yeah that is correct that is correct we are saying that the ftp this is a standard protocol that is used to transfer the computer files between a client and a server and for these ones they must be in a what in a net network Now, what are the what are what are the advantages now of having an FTP? One of the advantages of having an FTP is that uh, the ability to transfer files, even if the connection is what is raw, is raw. For example, maybe you had you are sending a document and it was around 25% complete, and and you lose the connection. Once you gain the once you gain the connection back, the file continues from what 25% together. So you don't lose what that information that information. Yes. I'm saying in case you are sending a document, it was around 75 percent complete. You lose the you lose the connection. Once you get back the connection, you can even proceed. Proceed. You're able to do what? To proceed. To proceed. That is what one of the advantage. Advantage. Advantages. Now another benefit of having the FTP, it enables you to to schedule a file. It enables you to schedule a file or a directory transfer. That's allowing the sharing, the file sharing in your own way, rather than forcing you to alter what your work pattern. That again, so you can schedule, for example, maybe you want to set this document at 10 p.m. You can just schedule at what at 10 p.m. That again, it enables you to get the information. Information. Yes. Another advantage is that there is what you call automatic backup. Automatic word back, backup. And this is the worst way for the businesses, such as medical practices, which cannot afford to lose what patients would inform information together. For example, yes. maybe for example, you're having a hospital. This hospital is having a database. And now they want to have a backup. They want to have what? A, back, a backup. The information from the local backup is stored in a what? Either in a remote backup or in an online back, backup. Right together. That is what we call automatic word back, backup. Even if now the local backup, or the local hard disk is destroyed. There is no way the patient's information on me can be lost. Now, what are the disadvantages now of having a FTP? One of the disadvantages is what you call the brute force attack. We have what? 
the brute force attack. attack. Some hackers, they use what they call the brute force to try to obtain the username and the password repeatedly. Yeah, together. It's like you are posting something. Yeah, together. That is what you call the brute force what attack, attack. The hackers, they will use the brute force attack to try all means to obtain the username the password of the host of that hacker account, the FTP. Understood? Yes. Yes. Actually, the FTP now, it uses its own vendor security. Yeah, together. So it does not rely on other security features. So sometimes, that vendor or that security relies on you might have uh, some design flaws or some, some, some vulnerabilities. And in case now that account or that security feature in the in the FTP is having vulnerability, it becomes a loophole. The hackers now can use what that loop loophole but together. So it does what a security yes. design yeah. flow. And the last disadvantage of the FTP, it do not support transfer of order of large information, large information together. Sometimes it is enabled. For example, in case you are sending two large documents at the same same time, simultaneously, one information can be lost or one document can be can be lost. Understood. So we understood yes. everything. And we are through now. Any question yeah. or any question? Yeah. This was just a recap of what I was drafting. Because most of you are absent and you requested I I repeat together for the sake of yes. your cut. Any question? Any question? Any question? Uh, no. Any question? Do any question? No question. Yeah, that is good. Now, I want to revise it for your card together. Your card is supposed to cover up this point together. Lecture yes. one, lecture two, and lecture three together. I want to revise it even for your card. I'll be posting. Maybe you're supposed to have your card on Friday or Saturday. I'll, I'll, I'll inform you together. I'll do what I will. I'll inform you together. Then there's a question yes. I have left for the discussion. There's one for discussion. You're supposed to discuss. There's a question there but together. You're supposed to discuss now the impact of internet to the society. Remember for the impact now, we can have the positive impact and you have what? The negative e impact together. Impact. I want to work on it from now together. I want to work on it, I'll be marking later. Yeah. I want to work on it. Just confirm that you can see. So you can see it. I can see it. Yeah. So just work on it now. You respond to that discussion. I'll be bringing the discussion right together. Yes.
You are currently the only...